There are many beneficial ways that we can use video with online learning, particularly at a time when remote teaching and learning is a distinct possibility. At times like these, being able to model a key idea or demonstrate how to do something is really beneficial. You can also use videos for making sure the learning continues when you set homework. You might want to explore the idea of using video to do flipped learning even. Let's take a look at an example and I'll show you how it works. So here I'm looking at a blog post I've got within my training school and you can see it's about paint. Let's press play and see what happens. Hi, Year 6. I just wanted to show you very quickly how you could do a quick painting in Purple Mash. So click onto the... So here I am just doing a straightforward here's how to do it video. To do this we need some screen recording software and we need somewhere to put the video online. There's a couple of ways that we can do this. We can do it using Screencastify. We can use standalone screen recording software. One that I use is called Loom. So you go to loom.com and you click this button here, get Loom for free and sign up to get an account. You go through the process of signing that up, which involves verifying your email and so on. And I would definitely recommend using your school email address for this, because at the moment Loom are giving free upgrades to educators, which means that you can make longer videos and host a lot of them as well. So a definite generous offer from them there. Once you've signed up, you will sign in and you will see something like this. This is your personal library. It'll be empty and big orange buttons are saying record a video. So I want to record a video. So I click here and it's saying, oh dear, you've not got the Chrome extension. So click here to install it. I could also search for Loom Chrome extension and end up in the same place. But I click here and I'll click on Add to Chrome. We'll add the extension. And then when it's installed, it'll want a few permissions to access the camera, to record the screen and to record my microphone as well. So at the moment, this box here is telling me that it's successfully installed, but that it's sort of tucked away a little bit behind this jigsaw piece. So if I click here, I can see my loom for Chrome here. I'll click on the pin to put it onto my extension bar here. And I can now dismiss this. To record, what I can do now is click this icon here. It might well ask you to log in, but as I'm already logged in, it's picked it up from here. And as you can see, it's got my face down here. I find that children really like seeing your face while you're presenting to them, particularly if it's a remote learning time. It helps to maintain that relationship that you've got with your class, which can otherwise be a little bit tricky to maintain. So I quite like leaving that here. Also in my setup, I've got an advanced option on here, which puts some buttons down here just to the right of my talking head, which just let me pause it and continue the recording um, whilst I'm making a video so that's good. In terms of getting ready to record up here I've clicked the, the blue flower and I've got to decide do I want the screen and the camera which I've just talked about. You can record the screen only and you can record the camera only as well which is good if you want to record your face and record yourself reading story to your class which can be really nice if you end up in a remote teaching and learning situation. So you'll make your choice there then you choose your sound system and your web camera. I can see that this is hearing my voice okay because the blue Blue line is bouncing up and down. Um, I can also choose whether to record the entire desktop or whether to just record the current browser tab, which I think is what I'll do. So I'm going to record the current tab and yeah, I think I'm ready to get going. So down here, I'm going to click on the start recording button and we'll get going. So now I'm going to need to trim this first part off, which I can do on Loom. So I'm going to now go to Purple Mash, to my home page, and I could show the children how to do anything within Purple Mash. I might be impersonating a child and show them how to open a to-do. I could be perhaps showing them how to access a book in Serial Mash. I could be giving any kind of demonstration. The main point is that I can record what's on my screen, and if I need to, I can press the pause button and it, this pauses my Loom recording whilst I just perhaps go to a different part of the site or take a breather, think about what I'm going to say next. And then I can press the resume button and continue. 
And when I finished recording my video, what I'm going to do now is to press the tick button to say I've finished recording and it will now take me over to loom.com and to my personal library. Now here in my personal library, you can see the preview of my video. And what I want, would like to do here is to, I'd quite like to do, to, to trim this. So I need to just go down here to the edit your video and I'll click on trim. And then within here, I can start trimming. And what I can do is cut the, the I want to cut off the, the, the first part of the video where, so I'm going to now go to Purple Mesh to my home page and I could show the children how to do anything within Purple Mash. I'm so I might want to watch the video say up to here and when just at this frame here where Purple Mash is appearing, I'm going to click there and drag my red marker along to that first appearance of Purple Mash and I'll click on remove now and it will trim the front of the video off that first bit. I'll need to wait a few seconds while Loom reprocesses the video. And then once I've got the video trimmed and it's exactly how I want it to be, there's just a few more little settings that I like to do on here. So to begin with, I'm going to click the settings button here and I just switch all these things off. I don't particularly want comments on the video. I don't want to have emoji reactions, although sometimes I do and the children enjoy doing that. I don't, I want to take off the branding. I don't want them to download it and I don't want them to see analytics. Although to be honest, it's quite easy just to switch everything off blue there. And then you click save. Once that's done, we want to to find the share button. So on here, the share button is this arrow here. I click this and I'm now going to choose an embed link. And I want a fixed size at 640 by 360. And I can just type into these boxes here like that to get that. I then click copy code. And now I need to go back to Purple Mesh. And in Purple Mesh, I perhaps need to switch the editing on for my blog that I'm looking in. And I'll click plus to add a new post. And in here, I'll just put testing, testing. Maybe I'll put a G on the end. It's always good to spell things correctly, isn't it? I can put a summary in here. And then once I've clicked into the main content box down here, I can put something in here to introduce the video. What I then do is click this button which says embed iframe. I paste the code into here that I've picked up from Loom and my video will appear. I can now click on save and publish. And if my blog is attached to my, ch my children's class, then they will get an alert to say that a blog post has been made. Now, if they get an alert that says that a blog post has been made and they come and watch this video, and then they've also got an alert telling them that a to-do has been created, which is the work that goes with the video, then it can all sort of fit quite nicely together. Um, and just to show, I can click on here and let's press play and just check it works okay. And I could show the children how to do anything within Purple Mash. I might, there we go. And I can click over here if I want to show that full screen. All good so far. We can also get videos from other places. So if I am if I found a useful video on YouTube, I can get an embed code for that. There's lots of video um, libraries online where you can pick up an embed code. I'll just show you one for YouTube quickly. So I found this video here from the BBC about the Vikings, which I'd like to embed. So from YouTube, I need to click the share button here, click embed, and then just click into this area and copy that code. Once I've got that, I can go back to my blog to my blog and create a new post. So we'll call this Vikings and into here. Let's just pop that code in so we can see that, how that works. And if I save and publish, I've now got my Vikings video. I could ask the children simply to respond to the video within the blog comments, which is a nice thing to do. If I click here into the Vikings, I can edit this again. And I could put in here, um, into the summary, watch this video and comment. And before the video in here, I could say, watch the video and tell us Again, my 
my spelling needs to be practiced so I can save and publish that. And then into this comment area at the bottom, I can have the children responding with their comments, which I can pre-moderate those comments to make sure that only things which are suitable get published onto the website. So we can use video for instruction, we can use it for to support homework, we can use it to support remote teaching, we can use it to support flipped learning, and we can create our own videos and we can access and use videos which are being shared from a variety of libraries that I've showed you there. I hope that you'll find this useful. It's a really powerful tool and thank you very much for watching.